Assalamu alaikum friends and welcome back to the channel, always with you Nishar Fawi. In this video, we are going to see some of the differences between seed classes and seed interfaces in Kotlin. Let's get started. So the million dollar question, what should I use to represent a closed hierarchy about something I'm trying to design? Let's say that these are some UI status you want to set in your application and stuff like that. Let me show you something. So let's pretend here I'm having a view model, right? And this view model has some kind of profile UI state. And this profile UI state is simply this thing, user ID, name, email, and user stage. All right, here the user status is some kind of sealed something, and it has authenticated logout and password regenerated, okay? The main idea about this sealed stuff in the beginning was to have some kind of closed hierarchy or restricted hierarchy. With this feature in mind, when we do the when statement, specific when statement, at compile time, we know that there is restricted hierarchy. So we can get all of those here, don't need an else branch. Not only that, but with the features such as smartcast, like here, we can do the following. Since we are in authenticated, we know that we can access to GWT token because the state is authenticated. If it is password regenerated, we can get the last session, for example, because these are defined here for everyone. All right? So this is one of the features for sealed classes in the beginning that we were having. Now, you will see that we have two stuff. We have sealed classes and sealed interface, okay? I created the same exact thing between this one and this one, okay? User status and user status, I have to rename it somehow, but this is the exact same thing, okay? In terms of usages, let's say you do have these two things, it is the exact same thing. You can use classes or interfaces. Maybe if you are in a team, maybe you should define some kind of convention like we are going to represent our stuff with interfaces or with classes, that's fine, unless you need some specific thing. Usually it comes down to two specific things. When you want to share something along all of your hierarchy, let's say you want to share some kind of variable, hello, I don't know, that is something. Although this thing you can't achieve it by interfaces. Although you can do something which is here to create some kind of val hello, the same thing, which is string. And then you need to define it across everything. Like you have to do some kind of implement as constructor like that. You can do it like that. For this one, I can put it as constructor, but for this one, I have to re-implement it somehow. Okay, this is the same thing. This is kind of restricted a uh, hierarchy of implementation. At compiler, I know all the implementation of this interface. You can achieve it like that, but this is still a little bit not good. Okay, even though I think you can't access it here, for example, here with the status, I can do hello. You can do it like that because that's a thing. Otherwise, I can replace it to two like that or the first one, and I can still access the hello also. Okay, but this way is much better than this way. Okay, this is the point. You can define some kind of shared stuff, but the way to define it is different between the classes and interfaces. Okay, that's the first thing. Actually, another use case where, because you need to think previously, we had only sealed classes. Why? We added sealed interfaces. Of course, there is some kind of use case. The main use case came down to some kind of specific design. Okay, the problem with sealed classes is that you can extend only from one sealed class. Okay, that's the main issue. But with interfaces, you can do more. I can extend here from, let's pretend I'm having some kind of completely different stuff. Let's say I'm having this HTTP error, right? The beauty, what I can do, I can go here to this logged out, for example, and I can do the following, HTTP error, okay? That's the beauty, but you can't do the reverse. Like you can't extend from two classes. This is a known property in Java and JVM languages as Kotlin. Right, but with interfaces, you can do that. You can let the logout extend from two stuff, okay, to represent two stuff. The main idea for that is that later on, you can flatten the when statement, all right? There is a great example by, first, let me show you this link, which is the proposal, why we need a seed interface in the first thing. This is kind of good proposal. When they introduce something to Kotlin, you can read a lot of stuff here why they needed curating the design proposal, how to design it, like many, many use cases, many stuff. This is an awesome kind of material to read, documentation to read. This is the proposal for interfaces, okay? You are going to see here that there is a number of use cases that need some kind of a freedom when it comes to seed hierarchy, okay? So they needed this kind of seed interface to design some specific cases, right? You can check it here in these two things. They needed a way to design their APIs in much specific way using the power of seed class to restrict the hierarchy. So they came down that we need also a seed interface. Although 
This feature was implemented first by Java, right? When they introduced it, classes and interfaces, you can see that the GVM, the Java was the first one, okay? First class support. So they needed to add this to support this kind of use cases. So the idea, like you are going to see here the use cases, you can see here that they needed some kind of hierarchy and nesting to achieve something, this kind of example you can follow here. For example, actually there's one great article by George Castillo. So in this article, like this one of the first articles about sealed interfaces, you are going to see here that he created some kind of structure. It is here, that how they can do it. Like we can see that we need some common errors and this server error isn't just a common error, it is also can get from get user errors and login errors. So you can see that this is kind of a mixed and a complex design to achieve and the ability to add interfaces in Kotlin allowed such a case. So the next time I want to handle get user error, usually get user error are only user not found and invalid, but also I need this thing and this thing and this thing. All right, how to do it? You can do it like that. Make this three extend from get user error and define something specific to user, only the user error. That way, when you try to handle it next time, you're going to get all of your five stuff. Like this is one use case on how to do it, but I suggest reading this ticket on your track and also this article, this is good articles. But for the moment, if you have simple stuff like that, you can decide with your team which approach is the best for your case. Otherwise, if you need some custom design in order to bring some good API design with complex structure, you can use the power of sealed interface and sealed classes to achieve your results. So that's it for this video. This is the essence. If you have simple cases, just use whatever you want, just make sure you have a convention in place. Otherwise, if you have complex design, you can use the power of interfaces and classes to achieve whatever you want. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and always see you in the next videos. Assalamu alaikum.